Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this video is our fourth video in a series to help you understand the idea of a limit. So we are thinking about as an input quantity for some function gets really, really close to, gets nearby some value, how does that impact the output quantity for that function? And so in this case, I've developed, a, I've constructed a special function. It's a square root of x minus three in the numerator and x minus nine in the denominator. And we want to examine the outputs of this function when the inputs are nearby to nine. So let's start by just mentally thinking through this and see if we get anywhere with that. So can you imagine if x is nearby to 9 but not equal to 9, the square root of a quantity that's nearby to 9, like imagine 9 point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 8 point 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, it's really close to 9. The square root of a number really close to 9 is really close to 3. And if you take a number really close to 3 and subtract 3, you're going to get a value that's really close to 0. And the denominator, if you take a number that's really close to 9, but not equal to 9, imagine this is like a 9.000001 or an 8.9999, and you subtract 9, depending on if it's a little above 9 or a little bit below 9, this denominator is going to produce a number that's neither positive or negative really, 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 really small. So the numerator is really, really, really small. The denominator is really, really, really small. What does that mean for us? This one's harder to imagine in this mental math kind of a way. So we're going to jump on technology and see if we can figure out what's happening. So we were examining this rational function involving a radical. It was this function uh, square root of x minus 3 all divided by x minus 9. And in our just kind of mental analysis, we kind of got stuck because as x, the input quantity, got closer and closer and closer to 9, the output values just produced this indeterminate 0 in the numerator, 0 denominator. We weren't quite sure what to do with that. The use of Desmos to help us to visualize the graph and a table of values might provide more evidence about the output quantities as the input quantity gets closer and closer to 9. So first of all, notice I've graphed the function. And as we explore this graph, the idea was as x gets closer and closer to 9, the output quantities do what? And what we can see here, I'm just going to click and drag on this graph. As the input value of x gets closer and closer to 9, it appears as though the output values get closer and closer to this point zero, uh, zero point one six six something. Notice right there at x equals 9, the function uh, is undefined because of that 0 over 0 phenomenon. If we approach, if x approaches 9 from the right side of 9, like a 9.1 or a 9.01, we see also that the output seems to be getting closer and closer to 0 0.16, something like that. Let's get a little bit better understanding of it by looking at a table of values. Notice over here in the table, um, right at x equals 9, of course, the function is undefined because of that 0 over 0 phenomenon. But let's look closer at values for x that are close by, approaching 9, like at 9.1. We get an output of 0 0.1662, etc. Or how about 9.0001? We get an output of a 0 0.1666. It appears as though the closer our input of x gets to 9, the closer the output seems to approach 0 0.16 repeating. We see that on the other side of 9 as well. At 8.99, we get an output of 0 0.1667. And at 8.9999, an output of 0 0.1666. Again, now it's important for you to realize that when we say limit as x approaches 9, we are thinking about that input value of x getting infinitesimally close to 9. And so even though I'm using things like 8.9999 or 9.0001, those input values are not as close to 9 as one could get. So we just take this as evidence and we would report that it appears as though the closer x gets to 9, the output quantity 
seems to be getting close to about 0 0.16666 repeating. Now let's go back and examine this idea algebraically to see if we can confirm this result. So in exploring this function using a graph and using a table, we've discovered that as x gets closer and closer and closer and closer to 9, this function seems to want to output a quantity that's closer and closer and closer to, and we'll say it's approximately 0 0.16, and it appears like that 6 might just repeat. So let's look at this now from an algebraic point of view and see if we can confirm what we're seeing here. Now this is an interesting uh, idea here that may be new to you. The idea is this. We've got a square root. That is, we've got a radical in our numerator. An algebraic approach that is useful here is to rationalize the numerator. I say that's unique because you may have, in your previous math class, you may have rationalized a denominator, but have you ever rationalized a numerator? Well, we're gonna do it now. Here's how it works. We're going to take this function here, and we're going to rewrite it in an equivalent but different way by multiplying this rational function by the quantity equivalent to 1. And I say that because if you multiply a quantity by 1, we're not changing its value. We're just going to change what it looks like. Here's what I mean. If I take the square root of x minus 3 divided by x minus 9, and I multiply by a quantity that's equivalent to 1. That quantity is this. I'm going to multiply by the square root of x plus 3 divided by the square root of x plus 3. Now, in just a moment, you'll see why I chose very strategically that expression of 1. But first of all, focus on the idea that this is indeed representative of 1. For any value of x greater than or equal to 0, that you take the square root of and add 3, take the square root of and add 3, this quantity right here will say will produce a number divided by that same number, otherwise known as 1. So I'm not changing the value of this function. It's going to output the same numbers whether I multiply by 1 or not. But multiplying by 1 does something that's very helpful in this case. I want you to imagine multiplying this out. When we multiply the numerator out using the distributive property, we would have this happen. The square root of x would get multiplied by the square root of x, which produces just x. The square root of x would get multiplied by positive 3. And then inside here, the negative 3 minus 3 gets multiplied by the square root of x. Notice, positive 3 times the square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x. That makes 0. Which is exactly why I changed that to a plus instead of a minus, so that when I multiplied, those two inner terms would just cancel and make zero. And then finally, a minus 3 times a positive 3 would be a minus 9. So this numerator multiplies out to produce just x minus 9. Now in the denominator, rather than multiply it all out, distribute, I'm just going to leave it unmultiplied out. I'm going to leave it x minus 9 times the square root of x plus 3. And now I hope you see something very useful here. If you take a value for x, any value for x, that is, and subtract 9, and then divide by that same value for x, subtract 9, we're going to divide those and make 1. So these just produce 1. So what we're left with is the limit as x approaches 9 of really 1 over the square root of x plus 3. Now, let's do the mental exercise here of imagining x getting really, 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 really close to 9. If x is really, really, really close to 9, the square root of something really close to 9 is really close to 3. A number that's really close to 3 added to 3 produces a number that's really close to 6. And so that denominator, as x gets close to 9, that denominator is going to get really close to 6. So we would say that the limit as x approaches 9 of this function here, the outputs of this function get really close to 1 6th as x gets close to 9. 
And if you want to check this on your calculator, one sixth as a decimal is approximately 0 0.1666666, exactly what we saw using technology earlier.